Good morning, everyone. Hope we are all well on this beautiful Saturday morning. For any of those of you that are watching that are new to the channel, please thank you for joining us. And don't forget to like the video. So make sure you hit that bell icon to be notified of any new content as and when it is uploaded to the channel. So um, I've seen your comments, Luke. And uh, yeah, I yeah currently getting makeup done and all the rest of it quick walk to the studio reading my notes chat with a producer yeah yeah that's pretty much how i roll to be fair you know um okay so this is the transfer talk live show and all it is is basically i've picked two stories at random uh about players that we've been linked with i mean to be honest with you if i did a transfer stream about every player that we'd been linked to it would probably last until probably this evening because there's so many players that we've been linked to. So I've just picked two at random. And to be honest, once I made the the thumbnail for this and, and got the player and all the rest of it, all players, um, there was then another player that was linked. And I thought, oh, I could have used that player. But I'm sticking with the two that I, I've gone originally. Um, and we'll just go with there. So if any of you guys in the live chat want to get involved and give me your opinions on, on the pros and the cons, of these two players, I'd be very glad to hear it. And uh, I dare say Luke will get involved because he's 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 lurking in the live chat. I know with with his with his sardonic wit, um, but I love it. So <laughs> anyway, so now the first story. Now this was for a story I saw on Football Fancast via the One Football app. Okay, so it says that there is a interest um in martin brathwaite it is spelt braithwaite i know but it's uh it's actually pronounced brathwaite he's the danish international striker who is currently on the books at barcelona no less um and according to this we are interested in him and this comes via spanish outlet sport imaginative name um and it says that we're one of four premier league clubs that have inquired to Barcelona over a potential move for Martin Brathwaite in the transfer window. The other clubs being Brighton, Burnley and Norwich City. So the real powerhouses of the Premier League are after this guy. Um, because obviously Barcelona have signed Sergio Aguero and Memphis Depay, it looks like Martin Brathwaite is now surplus to requirements. And it, the story goes that they want to get him out the door and get back as much of the money that they paid for him, which was 18 million euros or 15 million pounds, which they paid in February of uh, 2020. Um, now, obviously, we need a striker. I think that's no secret. We've basically got one striker that you say was a recognised striker, and some people not even to you know are debating whether Mikel Antonio is a recognised striker even now. I mean, I personally think that. We have to now call him a striker. Um, he's played the last season and a bit up front. He was our top goal scorer. Well, was he joint top goal scorer? Whatever. It was between him and Socek. But, uh, you know, so we've we've only got the one striker and he's a guy that's, that's quite injury prone and all the rest of it. Now, here's the thing for me. Martin Brathwaite. Now, I've had a look and he's actually had a spell in England before. I don't know whether people realise this, but he had a two-year spell or a two-season spell um, at Middlesbrough in the Championship. Now, he was signed by Gary Monk initially. He went there in 2017 when Middlesbrough were in the Championship at the time for around about nine million quid. And uh, by the time it got to the 31st of January 2018, so, you know, he's only played half a season by this point. He was loaned out to Bordeaux. Hmm. Doesn't exactly sort of fill you with too much confidence that a guy walks through the door and a couple of months later, you're shipping him off to somewhere else. What's that all about? So anyway, he then came back. And by the time he comes back, Tony Pulis is in charge. And he then gets to the middle of that season. And he's then loaned out again to Leganes in, the, in La Liga. Now, I've had a little look at his his record, his career record. I mean, 
again, forgive me, not exactly prolific. If you take all of the clubs that he's been at, his international career, 93 goals in 401 games. So he's just over a goal every four games. If we just concentrate on what he did for Barcelona last season. Now, you think about this. He, he's, he's a, a raft of world-class players. Messi, Sergio Busquets, players like that. Um, now, here's the thing. He was in the squad, just going on transfer market here, he was in the squad 32 times. He only made 11 starts. Now, of those 11 starts, how many times did he complete 90 minutes? Well, looking here, he completed his first 90 minutes, match day 12, and then he completed 90 minutes on match day 13, 14, hang on, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So one, two, three, four, five. He had six starts in succession where he completed 90 minutes. Yeah. Um, he only completed 90 minutes one other time in La Liga. So he had seven times of the 11 starts that he completed the match. He can, he scored two goals, two goals. That's it. Now, he played 1,000. I know you can turn around and say, oh, yeah, but he was coming off the bench and, you know, this, that and the other or starting a match, blah, blah, blah. But here's the thing. Now, I, I do like to drill down into the numbers because, the, you know, someone once said the stats don't lie. Um, 1,160 minutes he played. He scored two goals. So he scored a goal every 580 minutes or roughly every, just under every six and a half games. That's how it averages out. Now, again, I'm, I'm just looking at this and thinking, right, okay, so this guy has been in England before in a, in a, in a, the championship. He struggled there so much so that in the two seasons that he was there, he was loaned out twice. He, you know, he's gone to a team all right, you know, the, the competition for places is fierce, but fundamentally he's playing around a batch of players that are going to, if, if you're a forward, that you've got a lot of players that are going to be, you know, providing you with bullets, so to speak, to fire. And as I say, whichever way you want to dress it up, he scored two goals in 29 appearances, 11 starts, only seven times did he complete 90 minutes, 1,160 minutes did he play, Scored two goals, got two assists. Now, for me, he might be a really nice guy and all the rest of it, but fundamentally, we don't. I'm not really bothered about you know what he does for charity and all the rest of it. I want him to come in. I want him to score goals for West Ham United to push us up the table and make make us as successful as we can be. This guy's track record, I'm not looking at and going, oh wow, that's that's fantastic. That's really incredible. You know, for me. If we're getting a striker in that's that's got a career record of getting a goal every four and a bit games, and his record last season in terms of minutes played works out as a guy that produced a goal every 6.44 games, forgive me if I don't get the bunting out. So, you know... Um, I, 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 I have to sort of temper that with the fact, though, that so far, David Moyes has got every signing pretty much bang on since he's come through in this spell. I mean, you could argue maybe the first spell, Jordan Hugill and Patrice Evra, maybe not so much, but, you know, different different time, different situation. This time around, pretty much all the signings that he's made have all come off. Um, you could argue Ben Rama, but, you know, whether he was a Moyes signing anyway in the first place, who knows? So, but if David Moyes thinks this is the guy I want, then maybe I'll reserve judgment and go, okay, let's see how he goes in a claret and blue shirt. But the initial things that I've seen on the internet when I've watched him in, in the Euros as well, I've, I've not been overly impressed by him. He's okay, but yeah, nothing special. Uh, and I mean, Luke, you've obviously chipped in just as I'm sort of waffling on there. Um, yeah, big lad, scores goals, not expensive regional wages, but remove his Bar Barca. His record isn't great. His record isn't great at Barca. So even if you include Barcelona, his record is not great, Luke. As I say, I've just given you the numbers there, mate. He's got two goals in La Liga all season. All right, I've not... 
quite inclusive of it because fundamentally your your league form is your bread and butter. So I, I tend to go by that more than I would, you know, his record in Europe and all the rest of it. But as I say, you know, if you include his Barcelona record, I tell you what, well, let's look at his Barcelona record, right? If we include everything, if we include Champions League, if we include, you know, the Copa del Rey, all, all the other competitions that he could play for um, Barcelona in the two seasons he's been there, he scored eight goals in 53 appearances. So even if you keep his record there, Barcelona, Luke, he's it's not great. Um, Kieran, hope you're well, mate, down there in sunny Australia. Um, Luke's just saying hello to you as well. Um, yeah, I'm I'm good, mate. I'm I'm tip top. Um, you might have noticed I'm I'm not wearing a football shirt today. I'm wearing a rugby shirt. Um, I'm a, I'm a Harlequins. I wouldn't say I'm a, I'm a supporter. I'm as big a supporter of Harlequins as I am West Ham. Football is my sport. West Ham is my team. But I, I'm a sort of, you know, loose follower, a small F rather than capital F of Harlequins. And they've made the Premiership final against the Exeter Chiefs later. And we've got a rugby club near where I live. So the plan is I'm going to go there for the, uh, the game at Twickenham. I'm going to watch it, hopefully, on the big screen and have a couple of beers. And, and it's all good. So uh, come on, you Quins. Um, on the red wine. Oh, you're making me jealous. I'll tell you what, mate. Um, Luke's just asking the question, would our more direct play and crossing suit his game more than Tiki Taka? Well, I would. Uh, OK, just to drill down into that. What style of football do you think Tony Pulis played at Middlesbrough? And yet it never really worked for him there again. So, you know, I would imagine he's played sort of like under... Take it, Hulis, suddenly they'd have been loading the box and and getting crosses in and long balls. We we know the Tony Pulis style of football, um, and that's pretty much what you've there to a sort of like a greater or lesser degree. And he never lit, he never lit it up there, mate. So I, I I don't know. I just think that fundamentally he's probably not. I don't think he. If David Moyes brings him through the door then I might turn around and say, hey, do you know what? OK, if David Moyes thinks that, you know, he's a guy that can come in and do a job, then I might turn around and give give the guy a little bit of a chance and, and see what's what. Um, but just, like I say, just his record, as I say, his career record is 93 goals in 401 games. His Barcelona record is eight goals in 53 games. Whichever way you you look at it, not exactly sort of, you know, it's not like we're signing the sort of like the second coming of Jimmy, Greve, Jimmy Greaves or Gerd Muller. Just one for the teenagers. They're all going, who? Um, what did I do wrong? Absolutely nothing, Kieran. Absolutely nothing. It was the wife's birthday yesterday. So, Luke, no, wrong. I didn't get it from a cemetery this time. Um, Darren, hope you're well, mate. And uh, hope the weather's good in Thailand. Um, Reese, hope you're well, mate. Lovely to have you along. And... Uh, Kieran as well, saying hello to Darren. Um, Luke, I'm off to watch England versus Sri Lanka today. Oh, is that, um, are they playing the, the Rose Bowl or what, what do they call it now? The Aegeus Bowl, I think, isn't it? So is that a T20 game, I, th I think, isn't it? I'm sure they're, is they're playing some T20 games. I've actually got some tickets for that new tournament that they've got, the 100, which is, if, if people don't know what it is, basically it's a chopped up form of the T20 in a way. Um, obviously, T20 games, you've got a maximum of 120 balls. It's it's obviously six balls per over, 20 overs, that's 120. The 100, guess what? It's 100 balls. What a shock. Um, I think what they've done is they've kind of chopped around with the rules of cricket, essentially. I think you've got um, 10 overs of 10 balls or something like that, or... Um, I don't know. I did hear a whisper that they might have been doing, um, is it 15 overs of, you know, six balls per, which obviously would take you to 90 balls. And then the last one was a 10 ball over. I, ca I can't remember, whatever. But anyway, it's 100 balls in a match. And we've got tickets for a group game at the Oval, because that's where I'm from. I'm from Kennington originally. Um, I went to school literally behind the, uh, the Oval cricket ground when I was a kid. And... So we've got uh, tickets for a group game against the because it's not 
the traditional cricket teams. I'm going off on a tangent here. I'm talking about cricket now. I will get back to the football. Um, but yeah, the um, the sort of like the traditional cricket teams like your your Surreys, your Essexes, your Kents, your Middlesexes, and all that don't exist as far as this format of cricket is concerned. They've they've done new teams. It's like franchises and all the rest of it. Um, the team that operates out of the Oval is called the Oval Invincibles. The team that operates out of Lords is London Spirit. The team that operates out of Trent Bridge is the Trent Rockets. And you've got various other teams and, and all the rest of it. So we've got tickets for a group game at the Kennington Oval and we've got tickets for what is essentially the semi-final at the Kennington Oval. Wanted to try and get tickets for um, uh, for the final at Lords, but they've all gone and uh, it is what it is. But um, anyway, I'm just going to quickly rattle through before we get on to player number two. Um, yeah, he, he, he does. Absolutely. And as I say, I've, I've tried to look at it from different angles, Luke. You know, I've tried to look at it. Well, what did he do at this club? What did he do at this club? And as I say, you know, um, Barcelona, Middlesbrough, two totally different styles of football, different sets of players with different skill sets, blah, blah, blah. He didn't succeed at either one. So I just think he's not, he's just not a prolific player. You know, um, if you've got a record in your career of about one every four and a bit, it's like, with the best will in the world, it's probably like we're signing Carlton Cole again. And I loved Carlton Cole. I'm not slagging Carlton Cole off. Carlton Cole was a workhorse. And maybe this guy is. Maybe he's just one of those players like a Carlton Cole, like a, an Emil Heskey, maybe that maybe that isn't prolific, but creates opportunities for other players. And as I say, if, if, they, if that's what David Moyes sees, if he brings him through the door, then I'd probably go, OK, let's see how, how it goes. Um, so... Yeah, the Hampshire Bowl. Oh, is that for sponsorship reasons? Because England don't have a, an official sort of like sponsorship deal with Aegea, so they can't call it. I'll just call it the Rose Bowl then, for goodness sake. It's what they used to call it. Um, Mark, hope you're well, mate. Um, yeah, so 100 um, is 15 overs of six and one of 10. Yeah, I, I couldn't remember if it was 15 of six and one of 10 or whether they'd just gone... 10 of 10. Uh, listen, I'm going to find out when I go. And it's one of those things, you know, there's a lot of uh, traditional cricket fans that, you know, the, the sort of the purists of the game, if you will, that are just turning their nose up at it and going, no, it's it's a, you know, a bastardised form of cricket and we'll, we don't want no part of it. And that that's perfectly fine. I'm not a sort of massive um, cricket aficionado. I I like watching the T20s. I love that. Actually, I, I think it's a great night out at the Kennington Oval. Um, watching Surrey and um, but uh, yeah, I'm 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 willing to sort of watch it and see if it's any good. It it might be, you know, the next big thing as far as the sport of cricket is concerned. And if it brings a new generation into into the game, then I don't really see it's a bad thing. It might fall flat on its face and and we'll never hear of it again after this season. So who knows? Um, yeah, and Kieran saying same thing. Very average. Don't fancy him. I'm the same, mate. I, I think his record is fundamentally very, very average. And that's me being very kind. But at the end of the day, as I say, if David Moyes brings him through, I'm willing to say, OK, you know, you've, you've paid the money on him. Let's let's see how he goes. And as I say, he, it may be that maybe he doesn't score goals. Maybe he's one of these guys that's like I say, like an Emil Heskey, like a Carlton Cole, that maybe he's not terribly prolific, but other people were the beneficiaries and maybe sort of like, you know, maybe sort of we'll see Bowen's goal return increase as a result of him. Maybe we'll see for Nows's goal return increase as a result of him, you know, sort of punching holes in opposition back lines and things like that. So as I say, not a signing that if we're going to make it that I instantly gets the blood pumping and all the rest of it. But, you know, I, I'm trying, I'm trying to sort of be um, kind about it. Um, and loves going to the Gabba. Is that the one in, is that the one in Brisbane? Is that the one in Brisbane, Kieran? Or am I getting muddled up. I'm, I've got a funny feeling. Isn't the Gabba the one in Brisbane? Let me know, mate. Anyway, moving on. So we've spoken about Martin Brathwaite. And I think we're probably all in agreement that as far as his record is concerned, it's you're not really too, too in love with it. Neither am I. Um, uh, isn't it price, say, 10 million good for squad? Um, possibly, possibly. Um, again, no, you know, buy cheap, buy twice. That's the only thing I'd say, yo, Kieran. 
uh, uh, Kieran, Luke, um, it's the only thing I would say, you know, buy cheap, buy twice. And I know we've obviously got to have a limited budget, but I think we could be spending a bit more than that and getting something fundamentally that's that's got a better track record and, and offers more. But like I say, we'll see. Um, yeah, OK. Yeah, it, it is. I thought so, because my my um, sister-in-law lives in Brisbane. That's that's more or less how I know about it. OK, so moving on to the second player. 20 minutes and 25 seconds in. Most of it I spent talking about football and rugby, but there you go. Anyway, you're still with me. Okay, so the next player I want to talk about is a defender. Now, this is a Serbian international by the name of Nikola Milenkovic. Now, this is a signing I'm actually quite um, intrigued by because this is a guy. um, Let's sort of, I've just had a look on. Um, well, just had a look. Obviously, I had this up for a little while, doing a little bit of research before we hit live. Um, he's a Serbian international. Now, this is the thing I like. He's 23. So we're getting a player that's not yet in his prime. Martin Brathwaite, I probably didn't mention it, was 30 years, is 30 years of age. So, again, this is probably a guy that's maybe on the slide now. Um, whereas Nikola Milenkovic is 23 years of age. So he should be sort of like not yet at his peak and he's sort of like he's going to be approaching it in the next few years. Now, primarily, he is a he's a centre-back, but he can play at right-back. He's currently in the books at Fiorentina in Serie A. He's a Serbian international. He's got 28 caps for his national team with one goal. Now, he's been at Fiorentina since 2017. He's made 121 appearances in Serie A, and he's got 11 goals, which for a centre-back, that's that's not too bad at all. Now, he went there for 5.1 million euros, whatever that translates to in English, I don't know. I'm just going by what it says on Wikipedia like everybody else does. Um, now, just looking here, as far as his um, total in um, uh, for Fiorentina is concerned. He's got 127 appearances in all competitions and, and 11 goals. Um, before that, he was at Partizan Belgrade. Now, he is in the last year of his contract at Fiorentina. So, basically, this is the last opportunity that Fiorentina have, unless he obviously extends his contract. But, you know, I always think if a player's got the last year of his contract, either he wants to go or the club want him to go. One way or another, he's going, um, unless something very strange happens. So he's got one year left on his contract. So this is the last opportunity that Fiorentina have to get a, a decent amount of change through the door. Because if it gets to the January transfer window, they're not going to get an awful lot for him. And obviously, if it then goes into the summer next year, he'll walk for a free. Now, according to, um, and I'm just looking at this on tribal football, and it says that we, according to Sky Italia, we have launched a £15 million bid for Nikola Milenkovic. Now, um, according to this, though, Fiorentina won £21.5 million sterling because 10% of any fee that they get, they've got to give to Milenkovic's old club, Partizan Belgrade. Now, I always think this is a little bit you know, counterproductive in some ways because, you know, he's in the last year of his contract. So if Fiorentina are sort of like insistent, we want 21.5, whoever it is, whether it's West Ham, whether it's Manchester United, whether it's, you know, whole city, whatever, you know, and, and they're turning around saying, well, we'll give you this for him. We won't give you the price you want. We'll give you a little bit less, but whatever. And they're like, no, 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 we, we want this. Um, because we've got to give 10% to, to another club that's waiting in the wings. But the thing is, it's like if, if nobody pays the money, then you're not going to get anything as the selling club. And the club that he was at before aren't going to get anything. They're going to get 10% of zero. So nobody wins. So at some point you have to sort of go, yeah, OK, you know, OK, we've got to give 10%. But whatever, you know, the other 90 percent we've got and and we at least make a profit, um, we make a few quid. Whereas if we sell him 12 months down the line, we're going to get absolutely nothing for this guy. So I think 
I think that there'll be a little bit of common sense that hopefully comes into play and, and sort of like there'll be a deal that'll be made. It will probably be that they'll meet somewhere in the middle. We, we've we offered 15 mil, if you believe the Sky Italia report, and they want 21.5. You'll probably find it will be, there'll be a deal somewhere in the middle, about 17, 18 odd million, something like that. And uh, hopefully he'll be a West Ham player. So just looking here, he... Um, Last season, I mean, again, I like to look at their record, which I did with Brathwaite, and that was how I knew that he'd only completed 90 minutes seven times out of all the times he'd been in the squad in, in La Liga. So if we look here in um, Serie A, I'm not going to, again, I'm, I won't go into his European record and all the rest of it. But again, this is a guy that's got European experience. So, you know, ahead of our... Um, our European campaigns could be quite valuable. And in fairness, you know, Martin Brathwaite as well, he's got European experience, but just like I say, I'm just not as in love with that signing as I am. But this one does look impressive because, again, you know, one of the things that I also look for is is how many times did this guy complete 90 minutes? You know, was he, um, did he have a lot of injuries? You know, was he getting suspended every other week, this, that and the other, you know? Well, Here's the thing. He was involved out of 38 match days. He was involved in the squad 35 times. He was in starting four times. Yeah. Now he com he completed 90 minutes. Well, looking here, it's 90 minutes virtually every week. OK. Um, in fact, there's only one, two, three. No, hang on. Two, there are only two matches of the 34 times he was in the starting 11 that he didn't complete 90 minutes. So he completed 90 minutes 32 times out of the 34 he was in the starting 11. He was an unused substitute once. He had two um, spells out with um, suspension, um, two separate games, um, match day 21 and match day 32 of Serie A. And he missed the last game of the season because of this is the one thing that worries me. Um, he missed the last game of the season due to surgery. Now, I don't know whether that was, you know, something routine and, and sort of like he would be back for the beginning of next season. I don't know. It doesn't elaborate. I'm looking on transfer market. It just says surgery. It doesn't say whether it was a broken leg. It doesn't say whether it was just sort of like a, a sort of, you know, nothing sort of surgery or anything like that. But looking at his record, um, he's not getting, you know, he's quite robust, obviously. Like I say, he he's completed 90 minutes um, for every but two time that he started a match for his club. So I, I think this is a guy that if we get him, and like I say, I think we've offered 15 million, they want 21 I think that there'll be a deal, hopefully, that will be constructed that will be somewhere in the middle. Maybe, you know, we'll say, OK, I'll tell you what, we'll give you 17 and a half million. And if we get to a certain stage in, in Europa League or if we get to a, a placing in the Premier League, eight or above, um, then we'll give you another however much. So, you know, um, as I say, I'm this is a signing I actually sort of like like the look of. There was another guy and I did a video about it a couple of months back, um, Nikola Maksimovic, who plays for Napoli. Napoli. Um, he's also a Serbian centre-back, and I think he can also play at left-back, if I remember correctly. Um, but this, Maksimovic is available on a free, but Milenkovic, who's this guy, he's the younger of the two, because Maksimovic is 29, Milenkovic is 23, and that's this guy I'm talking about here. And as I say, he can also play at right back. So, um, you know, if Vladimir Su fouls out for any period of time, then, you know, he could obviously come in and, and do a job. So um, just going back to the comments. So, Luke, I'm guessing you're still talking about uh, Brathwaite at this point. He might be our only option after everyone turns us down for the 25th year running. Do you know what? I, I think that now we because we've obviously got European qualification and don't forget, look, we, there's a European championships that's going on. So there'll be a lot of players that maybe are on our radar, but we can't talk to them and all the rest of it. And because, you know, the, the, the sort of like the tournament gets in the way, I think 
once we've got sort of like more or less to the sort of business end of the tournament, so I'm talking quarters, semis and, and all the rest of it, um, I think you'll start seeing things happen. I mean, it's interesting that yesterday, obviously, there was a lot of stories coming out. They reckon that Sancho to Manchester United is more or less a done deal. They reckon that Grealish could well be off to Manchester City and, and obviously Harry Kane is possibly off there as well. So, uh, yeah, I agree, Reese. That on paper, looks a very good signing. As I say, he's still only 23. He's been in Serie A. I mean, I think I saw that that for um, tackles, interceptions, aerial duels, one, whatever, I think he was top of his team. And if he'd have put those numbers in for West Ham, he'd have been one of the better ones in the team as well, as far as the, sort of like those stats were concerned. So... Absolutely, this is a guy that if we can get a deal done, like I say, if if we can if we can get that done, I would uh, I would be all over that. Luke, um, can we check in for a green screen so his family can go about their business piece? I have I I have spoke about getting a green screen actually, but the the, the thing is, this computer that I'm running this on now. Uh, it, its processor speed isn't quick enough. However, I've got a new computer. I've got it a couple of weeks back, actually. Um, just fell into my lap, as they do. Um, but I haven't had a chance to set it up yet. So hopefully, if if that one's a little bit more oomph to its processor speed, I might well get myself a green screen because I've been on a lot of streams where other people, and they all seem to have it. So I'm, I'm, I'm the odd one out. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Um, wanted by Interpol. I couldn't possibly comment. Um, and then Luke comes back. He says, I've never heard of this guy, Serial Overlink. Anyone seen him play? This is where you need Gazetta Italia. Do you remember that? I I used to love um, um, Gazetta. That was, uh, you know, James Richardson. Um, you had Kenneth Wollstone didn't you? The uh, the late Kenneth Wollstone who was obviously the the commentator who made the the immortal uh, line. They think it's all over. It is now. Um, Steve's in the building. How you doing, Steve? Hope you're well, mate. Um, Sky Italia Sports News. I imagine it's just naked women presenting. Listen, you've got a very very strange imagination. Very strange, and I'd I'd go to a doctor if I were you, or if 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 sort of like if time's pressing, then just get a bucket of cold water. Um, that yes, absolutely, that is it. And like I say, this is what I look for. I look for little things like that. You know, did this guy play ninety minutes week on week? And this guy did. And he did it in Serie You know, it's not like he's playing in the Slova Slovakian Farmers Pub Division. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, this is a top league in Europe. Um, maybe not what it once was back in the 70s, 80s and early 90s, but that is still a competitive league. So, you know, um, he's completed 90 minutes virtually every week. So he's not got a questionable injury record. He's not a guy that's missing because he's getting sent off or booked every other week you know can come in and hopefully hit the ground running and, and not just be a squad player you know what I want us to be doing whether it's a defender whether it's a goalkeeper whether it's a striker whatever position we're bringing players in I want them to come in and I want them to be players that can relegate the players that we've got in the first 11 at the minute down to the bench not that the, we're bringing them in to go onto the bench. Do you know what I mean? Because for me, I'm just like, well, how is that making us stronger? If we're getting players that are inferior to the players that we've got in the first 11, how does that, how does that make you stronger? The best teams will go out and they'll buy a striker. They'll buy a goalkeeper. They'll buy a defender, whatever their position, they're strengthening. They'll buy a player that's going straight into the first team. And the guy that's got the shirt at the minute is now shoved onto the bench. And if he wants that shirt back, he's going to have to work and he's going to have to really press and get it and rip it off his shoulders. And that's, that's the way you have to do it. Um, Steve says we're a far more attractive proposition as a club. Now we're in Europe and not fighting relegation. Absolutely. Absolutely. There will be players now in Europe that a year ago would have looked at us and gone, that's a team that's been struggling with relegation for quite a lot of the last couple of years. You know, you look at our record since we went into the London Stadium, take last season to one side for a minute. We've been involved in a relegation battle, battle for virtually every season, with the exception of the season that we finished um, the first season under Pellegrini. Players would have looked at that and gone, not too sure about that. Don't think I'll bother. There'll now be players that look at us and go, this is a team 
that by hook or by crook finished sixth and for a lot of the season were sort of like fluctuating around the Champions League positions. So, you know, there will now be players that think, oh, I mean, case in point is James Tarkovsky. Now, James Tarkovsky is obviously someone we went in for. Hey, doing, Neil? Hope you're well, mate. Um, obviously, someone we went in for the previous season. And he was like, thanks, but no thanks. Um We've obviously now qualified for Europe. Now he's sort of looking at us. And I know there are some people that would be like, you know, no, he didn't want us when, you know, we were struggling. So stuff him now that we're successful, he can. But I just think, you know, again, I think that attitude could be quite counterproductive. I mean, I, I also, but I do worry with him, you know, because there was a story about he, his wife never settled in London. So really what's changed. Um, Luke, Eastern European right back, centre back from Europe, Fiorentina. Repka did it. Exactly. Exactly. However, the only thing I would say is that if you look at Repka's record compared to Milenkovic's record, um, Milenkovic, as I say, doesn't have a questionable temperament. He's not getting sent off week in, week out. He's not picking up yellow cards left, right and centre. So I, I know what you're saying, sort of like, you know, in terms of, you know, they're both Eastern European, they're both centre back slash right backs, and they're both from Fiorentina. I think that's where the similarity ends. I don't think we're getting a guy in that's going to get sent off uh, three times in his or two times in his opening three games. Three times in his opening two games. That would that would be quite something. Um, so Reese is just saying hello to, to Neil. Um, da, 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 da. What we got here? So Kieran, bang on, mate. All signings must be good enough to compete for a first team place. Otherwise, it's window dressing. Kieran, one hundred percent. I, you know, like I say, we we have to change our mentality. It has to be right. This guy we're spending X amount of pounds on, and he is replacing player Y. Now, as a striker, I'm sorry but we have to get someone in that's going to push Antonio down onto the bench or maybe push Antonio onto the wing and push the winger, whether it's Four Nows, whether it's Ben Rama, whether it's Bowen, whoever, Fredericks, Masuaku, pushes them onto the bench. Has Someone has to be pushed onto the bench. Sorry, but that's how the best teams progress. They look at the team, even teams that win... Premier Leagues, even team that win Champions League, will go out and buy a player that sticks your first 11 player onto the bench, despite what they've done last season. Last season's done. Last season's finished. You're gone. New players coming in. I'm sorry if that seems brutal, but that's sport. That is sport, you know. Um, and that's life. Uh, yeah, fair enough. Spelt his name right. I only had two and a half hours. Oh, the mate, that is brutal. Get yourself to bed for goodness sake. Oh, dear. <laughs> Spelling his name wrong. Um, don't have a problem with Tarkovsky's position. However, I wouldn't sign him. Yeah, again, I don't have a problem with Tarkovsky's. You know, if, if Tarkovsky sort of thought, well, I, I, I want to leave Burnley and I want to go to a club that's further up the ladder and push my England ambitions. Obviously, if he looked at us and we struggled, obviously, and we just escaped relegation, blah, blah, blah. He's obviously looked at us and gone, well, I'm just going out of the frying pan into the fire sort of thing. I'm, I'm not fundamentally moving myself up the ladder. So what's the point? I might as well stay where I am. If no one, you know, because I think there was the rumour that Leicester were in for him and all the rest of it. And I think if Leicester did go in for him, he'd have gone. Because obviously Leicester were in Europe and yada yada yada. Now it's it's changed, and obviously we're the team that's in European um, competition. So yeah, but would I sign him? I guess it depends. I mean, you know, was he twenty nine thirty now? Something like that. I still think he's a good player. Um, I think. Do I think he's better than Dawson? Yes, I do. I think he would push Dawson Dawson onto the bench, so he would fundamentally make. Um, <clears throat> but it depends on how much uh, Burnley are after, because I think he's in the last year of his contract. So, <clears throat> yeah, I, I I just think if we could get Tarkovsky for for a decent price, and you know, I I think he he would be a, a good signing. I I really do. Um, maybe your brain works better when you're tired. I no, definitely not, mate. Not in my case, anyway. Um, Mark, wrong age. I, do you know what? I don't know. I don't. I don't agree, Mark. With all due respect, I think was he twenty nine? I think he is um, twenty nine thirty. Again, 
same age that Dawson was. And I think he's better than Dawson. In fact, I, I don't think there's many people that would say that Tarkovsky isn't better than Dawson. I think if you look at everything that they bring to the table, fundamentally, Tarkovsky is the better bet. So he would push Dawson onto the bench. Uh, is he the wrong age? I, ideally, I'd like him to be younger. I'd like him to be maybe 25, somewhere in and around that. But would he make us stronger? I think he would. Um, you want him to be bent all like Repka. <sighs> He is getting sent off every other week and losing us games. I, I remember when he did that. I mean, I was there, I think this, it was the second time he got sent off, and he was getting he, he actually got booed off Repka. He actually there was. A, I remember where I was sitting in the Bobby Moore lower. There were actually people sort of like singing "F off Repka," and that was his third game for us. Um, yeah, especially after signing Dawson, I take it you're on about um, the wrong age, but again. He, he would put Dawson onto the bench. Dawson would become our backup, you know, centre-back. And it may even be that Dawson would actually be under pressure on the bench from Frederick Alves taking his place. So then Dawson doesn't even make the bench. I, I don't know. Um, you know, all things are possible. Um, but we need to strengthen. There's no doubt about that. Uh, only at work for four hours tonight. Needs to be up. <laughs> Mate. My heart goes out to you, bud. Um, I'd buy Tarkovsky, says Neil. Keep the op and wait for the young centre-backs to come through. Yeah, as I say, I mean, yes, we've got the op. I mean, there was that rumour that Gio did, um, he ran with uh, on Hammers Chat, saying about AC Milan um, and being possibly interested in Diop. Um... I think Diop potentially is a very good centre-back. I mean, you know, the centre-back that we saw in his first season was was very, very good. And obviously Mourinho was very complimentary about him and, and our scouting to get him through the door. But um, he hasn't really been the same player since for whatever reason, whether it's confidence, injury, loss of form, blah, blah, blah. blah. Um, I mean, we paid £22 million for him. I think if we could get that, back and maybe a little bit on top uh, if, if AC Milan or any other team came in with 25 to 30 million quid for Issa Diop then I'll be honest with you I'd probably sell him but you know that's just me because I'm sort of looking at it and thinking if we get in Milenkovic if Alves comes through and, and you know is as good as what people say he is then you know Maybe Issa Diop's race is run. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm with you, Reese. You know, if, if Tarkovsky came at the right price, I, I, I don't want to say cheap um, because, like I say, I, I'm a big believer by cheap, by twice. Um, but, you know, it's, yeah, if, if we could get him for, for a decent price um, that's, that's fair and equitable for both teams, because... You know, I I don't want to sort of pull Burnley's trousers down over him. Do you know what I mean? You know, because what goes around comes around. So um, we need a striker who removes our over-reliance on Antonio, especially as he's going to play for Jamaica. Well, um, those of you that saw my video a little bit earlier this week, I think it was. Um, yeah, he's been called up to a provisional 60-man uh, squad for the CONCACAF Gold Cup. So... Yeah, obviously, from from uh, a personal point of view, I'm really made up for him. From a West Ham point of view, I'm a little bit worried. Cyber, how are you doing, mate? Hope you're well. Um, Luke, uh, if Tarkovsky signed for us last season, we would it would have been for money. Yeah, it would have been. Um, it well, I say it would have been. It it probably would have been, but it also would have been. Um, I think if he's signed for us, he'd have had to have signed for a team that was higher up the pecking order than Burnley. And I don't think he looked at us and said that, you know, saw a club that was, and he's right, you know, at, you know, at the back end of not last season, the season before where we escaped the relegation with Moyes. Um, were we in terms of our performance? I'm not talking, you know, are West Ham a bigger club than, than Burnley? Of course they are. Don't let's, let's, let's not muck about. But in terms of where they finished in the league, they were around about the same sort of level, weren't they? Now, there's there's quite a gap. So, you know, um, we did look a shambles waiting to happen. We did. Yeah, no no getting away from that. 
Um, what transfers at the moment? Cyber, you, well, you're late. See, the trick is you got to be here on time, mate. You know, 10.30, that's what it said. No, 10.30, I hit start broadcast. Um, you've seen the two players on, on the... Um, on the thumbnail, we've discussed Martin Brathwaite, uh, Barcelona, the, the, the Danish striker. And I think everybody and myself have come to the conclusion that pff, we're not in love with that if it comes off. Um, I mean, he's a guy that uh, um, 1,160 minutes last season in La Liga for Barcelona, scored two goals. If you do the maths, it basically means that that's a guy that's scoring a goal every 6.4 games. His career record is one every four point something games. So, you know, not a striker that I'm looking at by any means and thinking, wow, what, a, you know, we've we've got the next, you've got the second coming of Jimmy Greaves or Gerd Muller or, you know, um, Cristiano Ronaldo. So, you know, but like I say, if, if Moyes goes for him, I just think, OK, let's let's give him a chance and see what happens. Um, and the other one was Milenkovic from uh, Fiorentina, which I think most people, myself included, are, oh, that could be a good one. Um, and as usual, we're now going off on certain tangents. Do I think Lingard will sign for us? Uh, I think if they sign Jadon Sancho, I don't see how Lingard gets in that team. You know, does he get in ahead of Sancho? No. Does he get in ahead of Rashford? No. Does he get in ahead of Bruno Fernandes? No. Does he get in ahead of um, Anthony Martial? Mm, probably not. Um, so if they go inside, I mean, you know, he left Manchester United because he couldn't get a game. Now, all right, he's come to us and he's hit the ground running and yada, yada, yada. Is he going to go back to Manchester United? and dislodge one of the players that he didn't dis dislodge before, plus another player that they're going to sign for 100 million quid that's a lot younger than he is. I don't think so. I don't think so. So do I think he will sign for us? Mm, not so sure. Do I think he will be a Manchester United player next season? I doubt it. I doubt it. Uh, do I know Stockwell? Cyber. Cyber. I'm from Kennington. Do I know Stockwell? That's like me turning around to you and saying, do you know Craford? Of course I know Stockwell. Um, but I've never been to the Lido. Never been to the Lido. In fact, I've only ever been to a Lido once, and that's the one in Charlton. They used to have one in Kennington Park years ago when I was a kid, but that went probably about 30 years ago, but probably more than that, actually. Um, unless we have three centre-backs and not Cresswell. Yeah, I mean, again, that's that's probably another position that we need to strengthen in. And um, that was one of the other players I was going to, um, not Cresswell, but there was uh, um, a rumour that came up just as sort of before I went live with this about Junior Furpo, but I might do something about him tomorrow. Um, by cheap, I mean 15 to 18. Yeah, do you know what? That would, that would be, I think that would be realistic. I think Burnley have said they want 20 million. But again, I just think, you know, if if you've got a player that's in the last year of his contract, how much can you play hardball with, with a buying club? Because that buying club knows, do you know what? I can just put this money back in my pocket and get that player down, you know, 12 months down the track for nothing. You know, so I, I think it's all very well saying we want 20 million quid, but. You know, if the buy, you know, a player is only worth and it's any commodity, whether it's a football player, whether it's a house, whether it's a car, it's only worth what the buyer is prepared to pay. You might turn around and say, I'm selling my car and I want two thousand pounds. I want five thousand pounds, whatever. But if everyone that's turning up that wants to buy it says, I'll give you a thousand pounds less than what you want. Well, you face with one or two choices. You either don't sell it. Or you take the money. And with a player, unlike a car, or I suppose he didn't like a car because obviously it depreciates in value, but same thing with a player. A year down the line, his contract's a year further along and he's fundamentally worth less than he was 12 months earlier. So you might as well sell him. 30 million for Diop, I'd shove him out the door, Luke. I would shove him out the door. 25 million, I'd think about it. 
30 million. See you later, Issa. Thanks. Thanks for your uh, thanks for your contribution in Claret and Blue. But you're off, ski, mate. You're down the road. Um, Tarkovsky still has another three or four good years in him. I thought he was 28. Could be wrong, though. Um, if anybody wants to check that on Wikipedia, I'm I'm fairly sure he's 29, give or take. So if someone wants to check on Wikipedia, I could do it right now, but I can't be asked. Um <laughs> I'm honest. You, you know, the one thing I am is I am honest. No filter. Um, cheapest code for competitively priced or good value for money. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like I say, um, I just always think of the saying buy cheap, buy twice. In fact, Reese has already done it. He's 28 now. He's 29 in November. OK, yeah. Again, I think if we could get an England international, I know he's not in the Euro squad, but he's got England caps and he has aspirations going forwards of playing for the national team again. I don't think 28, 29 is old for a centre-back. So, you know, if we could get him through the door for what um, was it Neil said earlier, or Reese, sorry, um, said 15 to 18 mil, I'd, I'd, I'd do it. Because for me, that's your centre-back pairing. You've got Ogbonna, and Tarkovsky, you've got um, on the bench, you've got a selection from either um, Dawson, Diop, maybe even Alves, if he if he progresses the way that people think. I think that's that's good going. Um, Steve, we need a one in 2.5 game striker minimum. Yeah, I agree. I, I think if, if we're getting a guy through with, like I say, his career record is one every four point something games and his record last season in terms of minutes played like I say 1160 minutes in La Liga he scored two goals which if you work it out is a goal every 6.44 games like I say it may be that he's he's an Emil Heskey or a Carlton Cole player that punches holes in back lines and opens up opportunities for other players and they can capitalize but fundamentally you're buying a striker to put the ball in the back of the net <sighs> It's not rocket science. One in one would be better, yeah, but we prob we wouldn't be able to afford him, Neil. That's the that's the truth. We wouldn't if there was a striker out there that, that had a goal per game ratio, like Cristiano Ronaldo, for example, we couldn't afford him either the transfer fee or the wages. So we have to be realistic, you know. Um, I know you're probably being a little bit facetious with that comment, but you know that is the reality. You know we can't get. Um, a Robert Lewandowski, we can't get an Erlen Haaland or um, a Kylian Mbappe or a player like that, even if they were on a free because they command such a huge wage, we could never afford them. So we obviously have to lower our standards a bit, but I'm not saying that, you know, we have to lower them so low that we're buying a pub player. I'm not saying Brathwaite is, but you, you, you take my point. Um, Reese, Sancho at United is a win-win for win for me. Frees up Lingardinho to come to us. Southgate will probably actually play him, but the only downside is he might have a good game against us. Glass half empty, glass half full. You know, you say potato, I say potato. Um, Fresh, thanks for joining us, mate. Um, Antonio electing to play for Jamaica has put his starting berth for us in jeopardy. He'll come back injured morning or late again. Yep, again, if you saw the, um, the, the stream I did earlier this week or last week, whatever, you know, um, about Jamaica, like I say, me, I am happy for him because I, I recognise that um, at the age he is, time's running out for his opportunity to play international football. And obviously, if he makes the final cut, because he's only in a provisional squad of 60 players, um, it's whittled down to 23 ahead of the tournament. And the tournament starts the day before or the day after the Euro final. It's one or the other. Um, so if he makes the squad, um, like I say, he's got not only an opportunity you're playing now if he goes into the CONCACAF Gold Cup does well he's going to have half an eye on the World Cup good luck to the fella you know for a guy that started his career at Tooting and Mitchum in non-league and to play in a World Cup that's an absolutely fantastic fairy story I don't care who you are and what team you support that is a fantastic fairy story but now I flip it and I'm like, now I'm looking at his West Ham fan. And I'm going, he's going to get injured. So there's two trains of thought there. But for him, I'm, I'm made up for him. Um, how many assists for Brathwaite in La Liga? Two. So he had four goal involvements. If you want goal involvements, he had four. Two goals, two assists. Not exactly cracking. Like I say, I, 
I I will reserve judgment. If he turns up in a claret and blue shirt, then you know I'll I'll give him a chance. Um, I want anybody that plays in claret and blue to succeed. Um, and if if I think they're good enough, then fine. Um, Sean, how are we doing, sir? Hey, fresh. Yeah, they're just saying hello to one another. Um, Alex, hope you're well, mate. Do you think that the club should have sold? Shouldn't have sold Grady Dean Garner. Um, do I think we should have sold him? With the benefit of hindsight, well, let's let's put it this way. What did you do at West Bromwich Albion? Not really an awful lot. Um, we got 18 million quid in for him, which everybody was jumping up and down about and foaming at the mouth, myself included. Um, but hindsight being perfect vision, was that a good deal for us or a good deal for West Brom? I think you'd probably say it was a good deal for us, really, because he he'd never he wasn't an established Premier League player. Maybe he could have come on and become one, but he hasn't done it at West Brom. And, and now he's back in the championship. Um who knows? Um, I mean, I hope he he goes on to have a, a fantastic career and maybe we look at him down the track and go, wow, what a player. Um, but I, I think 18 million quid at the time we sold him was probably good business. Um, but then people said that the 10 million quid that we got for Frank Lampard was good business. And then sort of like years later, when his career's over, you go, maybe not so much. Um, I think Moyes proved us all wrong on that, Alex. Yeah, probably. Um, and lazy. There you go. Um, no, I no, I never said Camberwell. Never said I lived in Camberwell. I ne I have never lived in Camberwell, so I definitely wouldn't have said that. Um, I am originally from Kennington. I've got a lot of family that are still in Kennington. I have an awful lot of uh, connections in and around the the um, area of Kennington. So um, Camberwell, no, um, that's not me. Um, with what we can afford, we should be looking for a striker who gets a minimum 15 goals a season. And again, now th this is a really shocking and quite a sad statistic. And, and some of you might know it um, because I've mentioned it before. We, West Ham United, the last time we had a player, not just a striker. I don't really care if they're a striker or a goalkeeper, if they score goals. Um, the last time we had a player that scored 20 goals or more league goals, not, not in all competitions. The last time we had a player score 20 plus league goals in a top flight season was 1987. It was Tony Cotty. We have not had a player score 20 or more league goals in a top flight season since then. That is quite shocking. For those of you that watch our season reviews, we, we, we did our last one on 39. Our top goal scorer that season in the league was Ian. In fact, he was our, not only our top goal scorer in the league, he was our top goal scorer in all competitions. And it was nine goals because, you know, he, nobody else sort of scored um, any goals in the cup competitions that, that took him past him. Our top goal scorer in all competitions in that season was nine goals. And that was a season we finished fifth and we had a minus seven goal difference. I mean, Luke will tell you it was just like typical West Ham finish fifth. Minus goal difference and a top goal scorer doesn't even make double figures. What's that all about? Um, I, I've got no idea, Cyber. I, I can't speak on his behalf. You'd have to talk to Duke. Um, it's his pub. It's his business. I am not going to tell him what to do. Um, for a start, he's bigger than me. Um, Moyes can uncover a gem. You're absolutely right. He has done it so many times. Um, in Moyes we trust. And yeah, and again, this is what I'm saying about, you know, any signing he brings in. So, you know, the, the Milenkovic signing, I'm, I'm quite happy with. The Brathwaite signing, I'm a little bit more, mm, I don't think so. But if he brought him in, then I'd go, OK, fine. So in Moyes we trust, absolutely. Um, I'm a free transfer and have low wage demands, but I don't think zero goals in a season is what they're looking for. Um, Steve, you may very well say that. I could not possibly comment. And so... Only again because it will force the board to buy a striker. We wouldn't have Kufal if Fredericks had been injured. Do you know what? I've I've put that theory forward, but I've been told by people that possibly know a little bit more than me um, that the Kufal deal was, was already in the pipeline and it was just an unfortunate coincidence that he came in when Fredericks got injured. Um, that's what I'm told. I don't know if it's true. Um, I'm only the messenger. So... Um, 
yeah, I love Antonio. You know, um, I just wish we could have got him maybe a couple of years earlier. And I just wish that maybe his hamstrings were a little bit more robust. But there you go. Um, Cyber was nine elms the other day. You know where the new station is being built. Yes, I do. There's a lot of work that's going on around Battersea and nine elms. Um, you know where the power station is. There's an awful lot of building. I mean, there's building work going on left, right and centre in London and the South East. We're just outside London um, in Dartford. And it seems that any spare bit flats on it so you know um what do you do um we slagged off the board selling deal and garner do we praise them now um i i don't know about praise i think i think i'll i'll give them due credit for um making a a, a business decision at the time that in the benefit of hindsight has been proven to be a shrewd one so um Last one in all divisions was Marlon Hare with an 0405. I thought it was uh I thought it was Sheringham. I might be wrong. I thought it was Sheringham in the championship was the last one that got 20 plus league goals. I know that Hartson got 24 in 97, 98, but that was in all competitions. In the league, I think he got 18 or 19. So um, but yeah. Cotty was definitely the last player to get 20 plus league goals in a top flight season, which, like I say, is is quite a, a poor, poor reflection on the club, in my opinion. Um, but there you go. Um, before I was born there, absolutely mental, isn't it? Uh, I would love to bring Edward from Celtic. Very good player and football manager. But hey, that means nothing. And I did. I don't know if you've seen it, Reese. I did a little piece on um, the last transfer talk. Um, and Edward was one of the players that I was talking about. Um, again, a player that I, if he came through the door and he came through the door without us having our trousers pulled down, I'd probably say that's actually not, not too bad a signing. I think 15 million quid, give or take round about that figure. I'd, I'd say that's good business. I think if we're going to shell out 20, 25 million, I'd just be like, mate, walk away. Don't get involved. He's not worth that. Um, but, you know, a lot of people sort of say about the Scottish Premiership that, you know, it's a it's a pub league and it's this and it's that and all that. But there have been some good players in recent years that have come out of there. I mean, look at Kieran Tierney at Arsenal. Look at Virgil van Dijk. I mean, I know he went to Southampton before he then went to Liverpool, but at South, he went from Celtic to Southampton to Liverpool. Um you know, there's been other players that have come out of um, Scotland over many, many years, um, but more they're the more recent ones um, that, that have come to, to England and done well. So um, I think he, he could come in and do a job, mate. I really do. Um, how long does it take me to realise your picture is Porky Pig? Too long, too long. Um, so Cyber, would you start Coven Connor Coventry this season? Well... Are you asking whether I would or are you asking whether I think David Moyes will? Because if it's do I think David Moyes will? Well, I think the fact that he had plenty of opportunities at the back end of last season with five substitutes to bring him on, even for a minute in the back end of the season when, you know, we, we'd pretty much done what we needed to do. Um, he could have brought him on at any time there and he didn't. So I think he doesn't rate him rightly or wrongly. Um, you know, I've I've never seen Connor Coventry play to any great length up close and personal. Um, I, I do think that, you know, if you want to find out if he's good enough or any player is good enough for Premier League football, you play him in a Premier League game. You know, it's not, it's not rocket science. You play him in a Premier League game. You see how they stand up to the test. I always sort of say, you know, if you put a player in in an under 23 game and you've got the players around that are playing at a certain standard, it may well be that that player plays at that level maybe they've got a couple of more gears but they just think why do I need to to, to sort of like go into those gears I can play in second gear and, and still do a job um, and it may be that you put them in a Premier League game and they find those extra gears and they they look like an even better player I, I appreciate that that most of the time that's not the case but there are exceptions to that rule and there are players that are like that um, he doesn't have hamstrings he has cheese strings yeah you're, you're right I can't argue with that peanut brittle 
hamstrings. Antonio is great, but he's had so many hamstring issues. They must be heavily scarred, making an injury more likely. Yes, that's the thing. It's the law of diminishing the returns. Every time he gets an injury, you know, it makes the next injury even more likely and probably going to happen quicker. Um, Dundee first game preseason. Yes, um, there won't be any Declan for that because he'll obviously be hopefully still at the Euros with England or you know, sitting on a beach with a, um, a lemonade in his hand. Um, don't think we'll ever spend on, that on a striker again, mate. Uh, you you got to speculate to accumulate, though. It's as simple as that. Um, and then sort of cyber saying, hopes Yarmolenko scores good goals like the one he scored against the Dutch. I do because one or two things will happen. We'll either keep him um, for European football or um, we'll sell him. And obviously, if we sell him and he's had a good um European championships, then hopefully he'll come in, he'll will command a better fee for him. So right, so they're the two players. I've been rambling for a while and obviously been interacting with you on the live chat. I'm gonna wrap it up at this point, or start to wrap it up. Um before any of you guys do bugger off and leave me here talking to myself, don't forget this is on the description below on YouTube and on Twitter. Please all I'm asking you to do is to copy it, paste it onto your social media platforms, put a little blurb about what it's about. Young Isla Kate and suffering from neuroblastoma and needs to pay for the treatment, needs to pay for flights, accommodation, yada, yada, yada. You know the drill. If you've been here a while, you know what this is about. So I shouldn't have to tell you. Um, this girl needs our help. No ifs, no buts. So please put it on your social media platforms. Let's try and get the momentum going. If you can put a couple of quid in the pot, you've got the just giving there. You know, it's the end of the month. Hopefully you've been paid. Maybe you've got a couple of quid knocking around. You've, you've had a good month. You're a bit flush. Um, you know, and, and let's think about people that are maybe a little bit less fortunate than us. And this is this is one of them. So um, if you can put a fiver in, a quid in, 50p, whatever, you know, um, 100 quid, whatever you're you're comfortable with. Please consider it. Um, I'd urge you to do so. Uh, and like I say, if if you can't, if money's too tight to mention, and, and obviously we've had a crap last year and a bit, um, I completely understand that. But if there's only one thing you can do, just copy that banner. That banner is in the description below um, on Facebook and on YouTube. So there's no excuse. It's there. You can copy it. You can paste it. Put it on your Facebook. Put it on your Twitter, Instagram, all of that. Um, with a little note what it's all about and let's keep the momentum going and hopefully we can get this little girl um it is in it should be in the link below the description in fact i'm i, I know it is because um i copy and paste it every time so um just go to the where the description is on youtube or on twitter uh, twitter um facebook it's there um just just copy it paste it put it on your social media um and yeah let, let's try and keep the momentum going for that little girl um time is ticking guys you know let's not let's not um try and dress it up this little girl is absolutely fighting for her life you know at six years of age so um if you're a family if you've got a family and, and you can empathize with this little girl um please help um, the other thing also that ties into that is our little hashtag forged goals for Isla, which we've got on, hopefully, um, try to get trending on YouTube. And you can help if you are on Twitter. And obviously, you if you're not linked on with us in uh, Twitter, then we are at Forged Talk. Um, we're also on uh, Facebook, Forged from Iron. Uh, we've also got the uh, the Instagram, which Duke did. It doesn't exactly trip off the tongue, but it's underscore forged underscore from underscore iron underscore. I wish he could have done something a little bit more easy to say, but there you go. Um, but yeah, as far as the, the hashtags concerned, we've got the hashtag forged goals for Isla, and it's uh, basically for every goal that England get at the Euros, we put a fiver in the pot. That's me. That's Andy Miles. That's um, Duke. I think Jazz said, I think he said he was going to put a tenner in a goal. He's, he's got more money than sense, that boy. But good luck to him. Um, I say more money than sense. He's, you know, he's, he's generous to a fault. You know what I mean? Anyway, um, we're all putting in a few quid and, and various guys out there, some of you watching possibly, um, have agreed to sort of put in, whether it's per goal or just a, a one-off donation, whatever, you know, 
Um, link us in if you're going to put a tweet out there. Link link us in at Forged Talk and put the hashtag Forged Goals for Isla. Much appreciated. Um, Reese just requested to join the face group. Have you? Hang on a minute. Hang on. Let me have a look. Uh, because I have got my phone right here. So let me see. Uh, have you? Oh, yes, you have. Hang on. Right. Hold on a minute, Reese. Uh, Reese, have you subscribed? Please say yes. Otherwise, I'll have to come round to your house and break your legs. No, I'm only joking, mate. I'm only joking. Right. Um, yeah. As, as I say, guys, any of you that are out there watching, um, if you haven't already done so, please, please, please. Um, I'll tell you what. I'm going to use the other one. All right. I'll tell you what. I, I, I do that one normally, but I quite like this one. Um, yeah. So, guys. Make sure you like the video, make sure you subscribe to the channel and make sure you hit that bell icon because as and when we upload any new content to the channel, you will get a little notification on your phone, mobile device, whatever it is to say some other piece of crap's been uploaded. <laughs> um, but as I say, if, if you can subscribe and also... Um, you don't need my permission, guys. If any of you ever want to um, copy the address on YouTube of any of our streams that we do and put it onto your social media platform and say, have a look at these clowns, um, please do so. Um, you know, because it's not about us. Um, it's like I say, part of it is to sort of spread the message about Isla. Um, and the, so the more subs subscribers we get, the more people we can give this message to, hopefully then the more momentum that we've, um, we're have we able to um, put behind this campaign. You guys should put donation on YouTube. Uh, I don't know how. Don't forget, I'm a guy in my mid-40s. Um, and uh, Duke, as you've probably noticed of late, has not been around as much because he's just absolutely up to his eyeballs with work um so you know uh I, i've got no idea how to do that mate I'm, i'll probably have to talk to someone about maybe doing something like that we i mean obviously we've got our work lives and all the rest of it and and to be honest of late i'm doing an awful lot of this channel by myself because quite simply as i say duke is up to his nuts in work um so i don't know how to do put donation on youtube mate but thanks for the idea if anybody knows let us know um you've subscribed and put notifications on yes have you have, did you subscribe today then reese is that is that something you've just done today um or did you subscribe previously um because the last time i looked we was on 425 and bear in mind we only went past the 400 mark the other day literally a couple of days earlier um so the fact that we got to 425 so quickly up uh, we're on 427 now good god good god well the next target's 450 um i've got a little thing called um what's it called it's a little little app that i downloaded um which points out um so yeah we've got two extra subscribers um that's nice uh what else does it got so yeah so i've just got two extra subscribers i'm guessing one of them's you reese and as i say if you know any other west ham fans please 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 let them let them know about us like i say you don't have to have my permission take any of the videos that we've got you know copy it onto your, your social media platforms and same goes for any of you guys watching crack on with that um don't worry uh just gonna have a quick rattle through the chats uh then whoever donates money goes to her as i say um i i literally have no idea how to do that cyber i've got i i'm still i'm learning on the job i'll be honest like i say i'm a guy in my mid 40s um if you'd have asked me maybe a month or two before we actually set this channel going that i'm going to be running a youtube channel um i'd have said you're absolutely off your rocker um but here i am so and I, and I am learning on the job there's lots of things that you know i will learn you know in the coming days that sort of like previously i was completely oblivious to so um it, it's always moving and 
all the rest of it. Titch, glad to have you aboard, mate. I, you've literally just turned up as I'm about to wrap up. But I've said that about five minutes ago, in fairness. Um, you should you could look on YouTube. Good idea. Good idea. Yes. Good, or Google is your friend. Um, yeah, I, I hopefully will. I'm, I'm hoping for, for a good result by Quinns. Um, as I say, you can tell by the shirt who I'm going to be supporting. Uh, but may the best team win. Um, Jake, hope you're well, mate. Uh, you have to get to 1,000 subs and 4,000 watch hours to have a YouTube donation thing. Right. OK, that answers that one. That answers that one, Mo. Um, so we are some way off. So if any of you guys can get us another, what is that? That's another 600 and, is it 600? No, 573, I think it is, isn't it? 573 more subscribers before we hit 1,000. Uh, 4,000 watch hours. Uh, I did have a look at that the other day. I think, I think, I think we might be past that one already. Maybe. I'm not sure. As I say, I'm still learning a lot. I mean, Jake's a black belt at this. Jake's been doing this a lot, lot longer than me. I mean, Jake probably has forgotten more about doing YouTube streams than I will, than I know presently. Um, but there you go. Let's get to 500. Yeah. Well, as I say, you know, I like to sort of like have little small targets. So my next target's four, 450. And then beyond that, it will be 475. And then four and then 500 so you know i'm just small chunks just keep chipping away at it chipping away a bit and you guys can help you guys can help because as i say if you take any of our streams pop it onto your youtube um onto your, your facebook your twitter your instagram uh and it may well be that other people and I, I don't really care if they're west ham fans or not to be perfectly honest with you you know i i interact i, I just like talking to people um i like into the interaction i mean if if you're a west ham fan that's great um, if you're not a West Ham fan, but you're not going to be a, a complete knob, um, and and we can have a little bit of banter, that's fine. I can I can give it, I can take it. That's not a problem. As long as it doesn't become you know a little bit too toxic and all the rest of it, then I'm good with it. Um, but yeah, uh, you subscribed a week or two ago. Been busy, mate. I completely empathise with that. You know, um, work stuff, family life. It, it's all um, it all kicks off. So, but. Thanks for coming along, along mate. And uh, as I say, you, you're now in the in the uh, Force of Mind Facebook group. Um, so I look forward to um, conversing with you there. Uh, let's just rattle through this real quick. Cheers. Yeah, not a problem, Luke. Thanks for coming along, bud. Um, Reese is saying Jakey boy and Cyber as well. And then he's going back. Uh, well, we got this. Uh, got to thank Happy Hammerette for getting me over. Yes, absolutely. If I ever bump into her, because um, uh, she's she's got a pub, hasn't she? I'm sure she said she's got a pub because I think I remember she was on a stream with Duke once and, and I was there where she mentioned something about a pub. And of course, because Duke's a, a manager of a pub in um, the Dartford borough. Um, his ears pricked up straight away, you know, sort of like all publicans together and all the rest of it. So, um, yeah, she's been quite, again, if she runs a pub, mate, she's probably similar to Duke um, and just absolutely ran off her little feet. Um, born in the mid 50, uh, born in the mid 40s. Who was that? Who was that? Not I wasn't born in the mid 40s. Let me tell you, mid 70s, mate. Yeah. Um, Tell Iron United, A.K. Anton, to to raid you. Uh, raid? Do you do you mean um, to to give me a shout out? Um, to to be fair, uh, yeah, that that would help. Um, you know, uh, true Neil, Miss Strange, not having her wind me up. <laughs> she's great. No, she's she's lovely. Happy Hammerette. Um, Darren. Thanks for coming along, mate. You look after yourself. Um, no complete knobs. On, only you. Only you, Luke. Uh, the, you're the only knob that I allow. You're the only knob that I tolerate on this channel. All other knobs, okay, because you've got the title of channel knob, okay. Let's let's just get this out here. Luke Legend is the official Forged from Iron West Ham United YouTube channel knob. Okay, so all other knobs that turn up have to be vetted and 
you know, we have to make sure that they're not as much of a knob as Luke is. Okay. And if they're more of a knob than Luke is, then they're banned. Simple as that. That's you, you happy with that, Luke? Um, hope you are. Uh, she works in what? Yes. Yeah. I, I, I'm sure she mentioned that um, as well. So, um, yeah, to get more subs. Yeah. Listen, I was actually on a stream yesterday with Anton um, and I meant to have a, a little chat with him about a few things and whatever. But, um, yeah. But listen, um, we've been on on lots of other uh, channels. Um, we've been on Irons United. We've been on um, West Ham Unofficial. Although Luke hasn't had me. Uh, Luke, because um, I saw his name. Jake hasn't invited me on his channel for the last couple of weeks. I'm I'm quite hurt by that, um, Jake. Uh, <laughs> uh, he's, he's sitting in now, go, you know, sort of like eating his um, bowl of Rice Krispies and, and sort of... Um, Looking up and going, oh, what's, what's he? What's he saying now? Uh, we've got a Discord server for Irons United. Okay, J again, this is something I, I've got Discord on my um, on my home PC. Uh, I don't know whether I should say this, but uh, I was told, um, is it the Hammers Chat one? Um, you can watch the games um, that maybe you shouldn't be able to, but whatever. Um, I've got that one. Um, but yeah, I, I, I probably only watch it for, uh, use it for watching games that I can't, um, basically the new version of Skype. Okay. Interesting. I'll have to look into that a little bit more. Um, plans I've got, I'm going to the rugby club, mate, to watch the premiership final. I might even go there a little bit early because the, the lions are playing in a friendly against, uh, Japan. I say friendly. I don't think you can ever have a friendly in a game of rugby. I mean, you spend, um, just setting up for a video and I heard that. What? Well, you know, invite me on your channel. I, I, I'm happy to come on. I don't charge much, you know. Just saying, just saying, you know. Um, but then you, know, you could turn around and say, well, when when did I get invited on your channel last, Gatesy? To be fair, most of the time we do the broadcast, it's probably past your bedtime or maybe not past your bedtime when we start, but when we're doing a five hour stream and I'm still going at one o'clock in the morning, they're insane, mate. Honestly, you, 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 you're best, best off tuck. You just use it to talk. As I say, I'll have to, I'll have to look a little bit more into it. As I say, I'll, I'll, I'll be perfectly honest. Um, as I say, I'm learning on the job. Um, it is a really steep learning curve. This, uh, post a look to it in Irons United and again into your group. Yeah, do it, mate. Yeah, not a problem. Um, been on Irons United a few times. Yeah, as I say, I, I think I've been on there once or twice. Um, in fact, no, I don't think I've been on there. I have been on there. Um, you know my prices. Listen, you you never had VAT though, young man. You know, you've got no concept of tax at your age. Um, we'll get you on, Reese. Don't you worry. Good lad, good lad. Um, epic. Uh, massive success has corrupted young Jake. He no longer needs the old geezers to give his channel a boost. That thought did cross my mind that maybe I'd served my uses and I was now surplus to requirements and chucked onto the scrap heap of old farts. Um, still waiting for, waiting on a spanner from them. I've got no idea what that even means. Reece. I've got, like I say, you know, you got, you got to sort of like say, remember you're talking to a guy in his mid forties. That's, you know, sort of, he looks like he's quite tech savvy, but he isn't. Uh, I remember Jake had a hundred subs. Oh, you remember when Jake had a hundred subs? Ah, yes, yes, yes. Um, from small acorns, mighty oaks do grow. Moderator status. Ah, fair enough. Do you use iOS? That's Apple, isn't it? If if you're asking, do I use Apple? No, no, no. Anyway, I said about. 10 minutes ago. Oh, can it, it comes another message? Basically, I can't live stream at the moment, so that's why. Ah, are you still having issues, mate? Are you still having issues? Okay, all right, fair enough. That's fine. I, I forgive you. I forgive you. I thought I'd been chucked onto the scrap heap. Um, seriously, even the 80s kids know, <sighs> mate. I'm I'm a 70s kid. Um, like I say, mid 70s, so um, tech time with games. <laughs> I'll tell you what, if you are having tech time with me, then I'm probably teaching you how to use an abacus. 
That's about as technical as it gets. Just to keep a lid on the chat. Ah, uh, right. Listen, um, I'm actually quite lucky that the um, I've only had a couple of instances where someone's jumped in the chat and has been a complete prat. Um, and I've I've put them in a timeout, and if they've come back and carried on, then I've just bin them. So because um, we've only got like 427 subs, it's, it's it's fairly easy to sort of for me to sit here and just click buttons and and sort of put people on a naughty step or you know just sling them into the moat with the crocodiles. Um, but you know uh, I know that Hammers Chat and some of the bigger West Ham YouTube channels have got admins that will police things in the live chat so possibly when we get to a, a few more uh people that are getting in because obviously we've got more um subscribers then it might be something i might have to get some people in to, to um gotta get a train you are always on the train mo i'm telling you every time you know you're either going to a train on a train on a station getting off a train i, I, I think you're a train spotter mate I think you need to sort of like get help. Right. One hour, 24 minutes and counting. I am now going to wrap this up. OK, so don't be putting any more things in the chat, please, because I when I see them come up, I feel like, oh, I've got to click on that because I've got to, you know, I've got to keep you guys sweet and all the rest of it. But no, I'm going to go now. I'm going to go. You're getting a train to Blackpool. Why? Do you know what? my my brother? My brother, um, last Sunday, yeah, we was in the pub last Sunday. It was me, my two brothers, and me dad. Um, we was in the first Reddy Bexley Heath. Um, oh, shut up. Um, <laughs> um, no, don't you start as well, um, Luke. That is naughty. Um, he turned around, and said Blackpool. He, he wasn't. Let's let's let. I won't use the words he used, but he. Um, he wasn't particularly complimentary about Blackpool as, as far as being a, a town is concerned. And and I went there about 23, 24 years ago. And I've got to be honest, it wasn't much to write home about. Um, we went on the, the roller coaster. That was that was pretty good. Um, and there's, if you've ever been up Blackpool Tower, right at the top, cut into the floor, they've got a glass sheet that you can stand and on and see what looked like ants but they're people milling around and they told me um it's enough to take the weight of seven baby elephants but i'll tell you what when you're stood on it and you're looking down you don't really think about that you think jesus if this gives way i'm gone um you are a provocative little toad <laughs> i'll tell you what i'm just going to quickly rattle through these you are Mo, you honestly, I'm gonna, I'm gonna slap you when I see you. I am gonna, I'm gonna get a bucket of cold water and I'm gonna um, chuck it over your head. You lot are really, really being very provocative. Great English train journeys. Do you know what? I haven't been on a train for quite some time. Uh, get your son in the background. No, no, he won't thank me for that. I am now gonna hit end broadcast. Thank you very much indeed for joining. And like I say, don't forget to like the video if you haven't already done so. Make sure you've subscribed to the channel and make sure you hit that bell icon so that as and when we upload any new content, you're going to be notified on your device. I am now going to bugger off and carry on my Sunday. Sunday? No, I've got I've lost a day. Saturday. Um, my Saturday afternoon. Well, it's 11 minutes. Uh, 11 minutes. 20, 57 minutes clock or three minutes to 12 if you prefer so i'm now going to clear off and you've just put another couple of more oh god's sakes we've got places to be well, don't let me stop you don't let me stop you um where's link what link i don't know what you're on about uh hang on what's all this uh hang on a hot day yeah trade amateur train spotter mate right so i'm gonna bugger off um Guys, stay safe and uh, don't forget, uh, come on, you irons. <laughs> <laughs>